Okay. So, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Barak Tawili, and I'm going to talk about exploiting web messaging implementations. Um, so, first of all, who am I? Um, by day, I'm the co-founder and CDO of Enzo Security. Uh, we are developing an ASPM application security posture management platform uh, in order to help uh, um, AppSec teams to manage and uh, automate their scalable application security program. Um, by night, I'm uh, application security researcher, bug bounty hunter, and blogger. I mean, you can check my blog for the interesting researchers and the findings that I've done. Um, and I'm the author of Authorize, which is the burp extension, uh, the most popular burp extension for automatic detection of authentication and authorization flaws. Um, this is a project that I am contributor for years. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, I'm highly recommending uh, using it. So what exactly are we going to talk about? Um, we're going to talk about what is cross-document messaging, uh, cross-document uh, messaging uh, security model and weaknesses. Um, we're going to see my hacking methodology um, and some real-world uh, use cases. Um, we'll see PASTA, which is an open source tool that we are developed in order to find such flaws and we'll go through the best practices in the end. So what is cross-document messaging? Cross-document messaging is the actual ability um, to send and receive messages from one window to another. Now, as you can see in here, uh, we can see that we have alice.com, uh, which holds a, a window, and we have another window that hosted on bob.com. Uh, we can see that uh, alice.com sent message to bob.com saying, hi, Bob. Bob uh, received the message, processed it, and sent back message to Alice saying, hey, Alice. And basically, so this is it. This is just the ability of two windows to communicate it with each other. Um, there is no uh, network involvement. It is all... Uh, happening inside the browser, it's in-memory communication, and there is no involvement of any networking at all. So we're not gonna talk about HTTP at all. Now, now let's understand how we are going to uh, receive a message. So first of all, let's understand uh, what is, uh, uh, what happened inside the browser. So we have the browser, it has, uh, um, there are its own uh, tabs. Each tab have a region. Each region contains uh, uh, windows. These windows renders a document, uh, which we have, and in this, this document, we have scripts. Now, these scripts can actually um, have the ability uh, to receive message. So basically, in order to receive message, we'll need to uh, use um, uh, to add an event listener into the window object. So we are need to use the window dot add event listener uh, with event type message. So we will be able to receive the message and and and, and handle it. Or we can use the window uh, dot message. It's just a synthetic sugar for that. Um, now, as you can see in here. Um, so when we are uh, implementing uh, a listener, we are actually getting a message event. The message events contains um, some properties. The most interesting properties are the data, which is contains the actual data that's sent from the sender into our uh, window and the origin, the actual origin that sends this message. And we will elaborate it uh, later on. So. This way we can easily uh, receive messages. Now, in order to send messages, we'll need to, uh, first of all, get a, a window reference. Now, in order to get a window reference, we can use two different ways. Uh, we can embed an iframe. And as you can see in here, uh, we have a code example that is actually um, creating an iframe. Um, setting uh, the, the source attribute as the uh, the uh, website that the the page that we would like to communicate with, 
um, we see that we are pending this, uh, this iframe into our body, then we can use the iframe.content window in order to get the window reference. So this will be used later on. So we'll be able to communicate with. Now, another way to do that is to actually uh, pop up a new window or tab using window.open um, in order to get the same window reference. So once we are getting uh, this window reference, we can actually use the window.post message uh, method in order to send message to this uh, uh, window. Now, the past message, when the past message uh, method receives two arguments. First is the message. It can be string or, or, or just an object. And the second is the target origin. Now, the target origin allows us to uh, de explicitly declare of who is the target origin and who should receive this, who, who, which uh, origin should get this message. Um, then we can tell the browser, okay, this message needs to be sent to uh, bob.com. And the browser will ensure that uh, uh, bob.com receives this. Now, so if we're trying to simplify, uh, cross-document messaging is uh, the ability of two windows to communicate. So let's see uh, uh, the most simple example in here uh, of two window to communicate with each other. So on the left, we have a window that hosted on, uh, on uh, alice.com. We can see that uh, it used window.open in order to uh, uh, get the window reference to uh, bob.com. And it will, the, the browser will pop up uh, another tab with, uh, with the bob.com uh, um, page. And we can use the, the window reference that post message in order to send the message, hey, Bob, to uh, bob.com origin. Now we can see on the right side that bob.com code um, is actually implementing uh, an event listener to handle messages. And what it does, it uses the window.opener in order to get a window reference to the origin that opened it. In this case, it's uh, alice.com. Then he used he send a, a hey Alice message uh, and pass the target origin uh, alice.com. This actually sends the message back to Alice. So this is the most simplified way to describe uh, cross document messaging. Now let's understand the cross document messaging security model. Uh, um, and its uh, weaknesses. So basically, uh, we have three components when um, security feature can be implemented. We have the sender code that can uh, apply uh, security inside the sender code, the receiver code, and the browser feature that allows us to set some headers in order to avoid risky um, situations. So let's understand the sender code uh, security model. So the sender code must spe specify uh, the target origin. Now, the target region um, can be used uh, via the value wildcard, saying that there is no preferences of who should get the, who should be the recipients. And then basically any, uh, any uh, uh, receiver that will listen to, to uh, messages will be able to read this message. Now, in here, in the MDN documentation, you can see that they are all, they are saying always provide a specific target region and not a wildcard. Now, we see many times when developers are using wildcard. Um, it is happening, but usually uh, because there is many ca many cases when it is might be uh, hard for the developer to understand explicitly the target origin. Um, we see some implementations that uh, target origins uh, passed via parameters. We see that uh, uh, many cases when wildcard are using. And I think the main reason for that is that 
developers needs to support um, multiple uh, use cases and multiple uh, origins, um, like uh, like uh, subdomains. Uh, maybe they have some whitelisting, and and they have to communicate with uh, multiple uh, uh, target regions. Then um, developers might use wildcards or any other uh, um, insecure implementations. Um, and, and we will see it uh, later on on the use cases uh, um, slide. Now, let's understand uh, the browser features that allows us to uh, avoid some risky scenarios. Um, so we have three headers, the cross-origin opener policy, the cross-origin uh, embedder policy, and the X-frame options. Now, the cross they are all uh, can be used in order to avoid some uh, uh, some scenarios and not and it's not really a holistic one. Let's say okay, so the the cross region opener policy allows to a uh, specific region not being able to use window opener inside the in your uh, on your domain. <clears throat> um, the embedder policy. Uh, uh, and the X-frame option is actually allowing you to um, avoid being uh, being uh, uh, um, embedded inside uh, another uh, scenarios, but each one of them can be bypassed. We have window open and we have uh, iframe, so it's not really holistic enough. And I think in specifically on cross document messaging uh, implementations, they have some but usually it's a front-end developers. Um, they might not be able to uh, to uh, um, write a backend code, so they won't be able to add these others. And there are many uh, many cases when when it might be tricky to to use this. Um, and I think that this is why I think we can we see that uh, there is no many many. Um, scenarios when we see these headers. In fact, except for uh, X-frame options, that is usually um, um, being used in order to avoid the click jacking attacks. Uh, the receiver code um, security model is actually that the developer is receiving the the actual um, event uh, origin, and it needs to uh, authorize the each origin and each message that he get. Um, we can see in here that we have this code that is implementing the listener. Um, and we can see that the developer checking if the origin of the event equals to example.org. And in case it's not, um, it won't process the message. In case it is, it will continue to, um, to process the code. Now, the issue in here is that in many cases, um, you would like to, you are running on different in, different environments. Um, you are, you need to, you have some multiple use cases that you need to support, maybe multiple domains or, uh, or uh, maybe um, subdomains. So you will see a lot of, uh, weird implementations around this uh, domain ver uh, origin verification. And we can see many developers making a lot of mistakes. Um, they are making uh, uh, um, regexes, checks, and some weird includes, and like many, many implementations that uh, can be bypassed, or the developers are just skip the authorization and they are not implementing uh, these checks at all. Um, so it might be really, really tricky for developers in order to actually uh, um, write this uh, and implement this uh, authorization uh, flow. So let's talk about the uh, potential weaknesses. So we have uh, the sender code. In the sender code, we have uh, spoofing. Um, it's vulnerable for it might be vulnerable for spoofing because he might uh, not be aware of who exactly is uh, it is going to uh, uh, send the, their messages uh, to. Um, so the sender code might use wildcard or might implement it 
insecurely the, the target or region, then uh, it will be able, he might send the messages into recipients that uh, didn't meant to get this uh, message and it could be potentially malicious, then he will be able to, he, will, uh, he might cause uh, uh, sensitive information leakage. Um, on the other hand, we have the receiver code that is actually uh, vulnerable for spoofing as well, because he might uh, receive some messages uh, from senders that uh, he didn't mean to uh, receive this message from. Um, they might not implement the, the, uh, the, the origin verification uh, properly or might just uh, uh, skip and then just not uh, implement it. Um, then we will be able, like the attackers will be able to uh, spoof and, and actually send messages into these uh, receivers. And then we have uh, um, we have uh, the tampering, which uh, so the actual payload that's sent from senders uh, might uh, manipulate the the code in the receiver and abuse its functionality and cause. Um, XSS, CSRF, open redirections, logical flaws, uh, denial of service, and many, many more. It depends on the actual implementations. So let's see some uh, attack examples. Uh, we can see that we have uh, we can attack senders uh, to eavesdrop sensitive data and we can attack uh, receivers in order to abuse the remote functionality um, to do uh, malicious uh, operations. So let's see some example of uh, vulnerable uh, um, sender code. So we can see on the left, we have the targeted uh, uh, .com region um, and it implemented this script. This script is actually calling an SSO authenticate call. Um, <clears throat> this SSO authenticate function is actually uh, used in order to uh, generate an access token to authenticated user. Um, then what it does, it uses a window.opener to get a window reference for whoever opened it um, and send a message with the access token and the, the target origin specified uh, as a wildcard, which means that any recipient can uh, um, receive this message. And it sends, obviously, the, the access token. Um, so how exactly uh, a malicious uh, uh, code will look like? So as we can see in here, um, the malicious code um, is actually, first of all, implemented a listener um, to get to receive messages um, once uh, handy used um, save event message to DB function that is actually um, saving any message that uh, that will uh, will be received into re into this listener um, they will save it in the attacker's uh, DB then he used the window that open in order to actually uh, um, open up uh, a new tab into the to the targeted uh, website uh, page. Now, the targeted website page will execute the SSO authenticate, will generate the access token, and will use window.opener uh, dot post message in order to send the access token into whoever opened it, and uh, the attacker will be able to. Um, receive this access token and take over um, the victim's account. Now, um, let's see uh, a, weakness, a receiver code weakness. So in here, we can see we have uh, bob.com. Um, bob.com uh, implemented um, a listener. This listener is basically uh, might, uh, might uh, um, implement an authentication, maybe not in this case. Um, the implementation is that, as you can see, that uh, the developer checks if the event origin includes the string .bob.com. In case it is, um, it's, it's, he will pass. In case it's not, uh, he will 
uh, not process the message. So basically, in here we can see uh, uh, some implementation that, that is vulnerable, that is trying to say, okay, I will allow only uh, subdomains of Bob.com to um, get into to get processed uh, at all. Then, in case it is, so we are using the document. The developer used the document location in order to uh, redirect the user into the uh, return to parameter that uh, received inside this uh, event message. Now, how the attacker can actually uh, um, bypass it. So we can see in here, um, the attacker used um, task.bob.com as a subdomain of the malicious of uh, his own uh, malicious.com domain in order to pass uh, the previous uh, um, insecure implementations that just check in if the origin includes .bob.com. So it is, and it will pass this uh, uh, authorization check. Then um, what he will do, it will just uh, use a window to open um, in order to get a window reference. He will uh, create a payload with the return to uh, a parameter that uh, the user will be redirected to it. Then um, we actually in here see that uh, the attacker used JavaScript in order to um, redirect the user again. So basically the attacker can execute JavaScript on the behalf of the vulnerable website. Um, and he used to in order he used it in order to redirect the user uh, again into uh, these his malicious page. Um, and it, app it appended the document cookies of the victim in order to steal uh, the victim's cookies um, and save it later on and, and take over the victim's account la later on. Um, then he just used the window ref uh, uh, post messages in, post message in order to send the payload um, to the, the relevant uh, origin. So basically we can see in here that we, we have the ability, so we pass the, the, the authorization check and due, and due to insecure implementation on the receiver code, we saw um, that we can abuse it in order to run JavaScript and uh, take and, and, and steal the victim's cookies. Let's talk about the key weaknesses. Um, so parse document messaging uh, weaknesses are that by default, windows can get a window reference and and send post messages to whoever uh, they want uh, and, and in between to each other. Um, developers have uh, many responsibilities and with many responsibilities comes many uh, mistakes uh, that might occur. Um, and on the receiver script, they, there is no authorization, uh, default authorization, so developers needs to uh, implement their own uh, authorization checks. Um, in sender scripts, uh, we have the ability um, to uh, use wildcard and not explicitly declare on a specific um, target origin. And we can see in many cases uh, when we are running on a different environments and when we are, it needs to uh, uh, to support many use cases, whitelisting, subdomain whitelisting, and many other ca cases, it is uh, it has been really really tricky um, to actually explicitly determine um, who should be the sender or the receiver. Now let's um, talk about uh, the hacking methodology. So. First, first of all, uh, we'll need to identify the potential targets. Now, the potential targets are quite simple. Um, they are um, any uh, window that uh, listens to messages and any window that can send message. Now, let's go and drill down to the attack flow of each one of them um, to understand how the how how the flow is looking like and and what you need to identify and in order to find such vulnerabilities. 
so let's talk about the listener uh, attack flow. So first of all, you need to do is to actually look for code that implementing listeners. Now you can do that via uh, developers tools or any proxy tool or any other tool that is uh, allowing you to uh, look for uh, strings inside the, the targeted website um, code. So you can do that via like look for a window dot on message string or uh, checking if they have a window dot at an event listener with event type uh, message. Now, once we're having this, you will see a huge, <clears throat> sorry, amount of, uh, of listeners. Um, and after that, you'll need to check if they're implemented the proper authorization. Now, you're going to see a lot of use cases um, when maybe the authentication, the authorization uh, at all is not implemented. Um, and you, or you will see a lot of uh, cases when um, you will see regexes and some weird statements and maybe sometimes uh, um, you will see that uh, you are getting some parameters and you will see a lot of weird implementations around the authorization and you'll need to investigate to understand exactly um, if the authorization is properly defined and if it might be bypassed. We will see in the next slides um, um, real use cases uh, of, of this uh, authorization flows. Um, <clears throat> then uh, you'll need to check if the code can be abused. Um, so after, even if there is no authorization check, uh, maybe this uh, listener do nothing uh, uh, and you will you will need to understand exactly if uh, it uses uh, some risky functions like, I don't know, like creating some uh, elements and doing some DOM manipulation, maybe some uh, redirects or there are many, many use cases um, that might be manipulated. Um, it depends on the on the actual implementation of each specific listener. Um, then you'll need to get a window reference. Um, so you will need to understand if you have the ability to get a window reference. Um, in most of the cases, yes, maybe you have some restrictions. Um, then you will need to write the actual exploit. Now, writing an exploit can be um, quite problematic uh, because you will need to understand exactly how the uh, custom protocol um, um, of the receivers are happening or are uh, implementing and how exactly the payloads needs to uh, be sent. And you will see a lot of weird uh, um, um, protocols that being used. Um, so it might require a drilling down into the actual messaging protocol um, because it's sometimes it's just simple string. Sometimes you'll see a lot of uh, weird implementations around it. Um, so it might require a further investigation and drilling down to uh, the code. Now, Let's talk about the sender's attack flow. Um, so same as, as the previous slide, we'll, now we'll need to look for a post message uh, method usage. Um, same, we can use a developer's tool or any other tool to, to do that. Um, and then you will, will be able to see all the post message uh, column. Now, <clears throat> sorry. Now, um, then we'll need to look for uh, sensitive messages because if we are like, this is what we are, when, when we're talking about the sender, we'll like to receive the, the uh, sensitive uh, uh, messages from the senders and we will be the, we will be, uh, the receivers. So we'll need to go to understand the, <clears throat> the application flow in order to, to understand if uh, the messages are sensitive, maybe there are some token paths, maybe there are some parameters or any sen any other sensitive data. Um, so after we understand that we have the, the post message, we uh, realize that it is uh, uh, used uh, sensitive data, then we'll need to analyze the target origin implementation. 
So the easiest way is like if if we have a wild card, but you will be surprised to see how many weird implementation we have around that as well. Um, sometimes, in many cases, there are some parameters that passed in order to uh, be able to support multiple domains, and you will need to understand exactly um, the, the the actual protocol and and if the targeted region implementation can be uh, um, abused or bypassed uh, in order that you will be able to receive the message. Um, then <clears throat> we'll need to write an exploit. Um, the exploit, again, can be, in this case, can be really, uh, really easy because we are just uh, implementing a receiver and needs to maybe uh, uh, use some manipulation around the target origin implementations. Um, but sometimes, and sometimes you will need to, <clears throat> sorry, to get uh, a window reference because sometimes when you when you want to reach the sender code, you will realize that you might uh, need to send a message in order to reach the exact code in order to trigger the other post message. So basically, um, it. It might, uh, it, it optionally, you might need uh, um, to get a window reference in order to send the message. Um, so to trigger the other, uh, uh, the other side to send uh, uh, the sensitive uh, message back to you. Now let's see some uh, real-world use cases. So. Um, we have uh, an insecure region verification on a really big ad tech company that I cannot uh, expose now um, that used uh, that this is used uh, uh, in order to um, perform some, this allows us to perform some read write, local storage, um, CSRF, XSS, and read uh, the, the uh, vulnerable. Uh, uh, the, the victims' uh, cookies. Uh, we have uh, another big payment provider that uh, was exposed to information theft um, that we had the ability to read and write session storage and uh, perform uh, CSRF. And uh, we'll see AliExpress uh, sidebar takeover that, uh, that end up uh, as, as an XSS. Um, and let's go and drill down for each one of them. So in here we can see uh, the insecure uh, origin verification. Um, so basically we can see the actual implementation of the code of the listener. So we can see that they are implemented uh, listener. Uh, we have the pass data parameter that, uh, that use the until JSON, which is uh, passing the event.data. Um, into this uh, uh, handle JSON param with the handler parse, um, and let's understand what what happening in the handle JSON param uh, function. So we can see it have some input validation uh, checks, and it checks in case the handler is parse. Um, it's just validating if the args data, which is controlled by us, which is the actual event data. Um, is a valid JSON. In case it is, it will parse it and return it back to uh, to the uh, pass data uh, parameter. Now, in here we can see that we have some verification. Let's understand what is it. Um, so we can see that um, the developer checking if the document referrer is starting with the event of the origin. This is the first statement. Uh, if you ask me, I don't know why uh, the developer actually ch chose to implement it that way. Uh, but basically, this statement will always be true uh, due to the fact that if I'm embedding uh, some window or uh, using window open, so my malicious origin that will send a message to this uh, uh, listener later on will always, uh, so the statement will always be true because I will be uh, 
always the referrer of this uh, document because I am the one who opened it. Uh, but let's let's ignore it and let's go and see the other uh, implement the other uh, statement that so there are, the developer checks if the document referrer is empty string and if the origin is uh, null. Now this can be bypassed as well. Uh, if you would like to to uh, elaborate and get more detail around the original attacks, you can uh, check my blog and. And I have uh, uh, some for some article uh, um, the, describing this attack. Uh, but basically, we can use iframe source docs in order to uh, fake this original uh, uh, domains, and we will be able to pass this check as well. And um, and so this is bypassable, bypassable uh, as well. And we have the last state statement that checking if. Uh, Pass data is exist, and if pass data dot null sent from BDSDK is true, and in case it is, um, it is uh, it will go and pass this check. And obviously, we are uh, controlling the pass data, so we have the ability to uh, bypass this uh, check as well. So basically, these three checks are bypassable. Um, and let's see what what the, the what the rest of the club uh, allows us to do, and how can we abuse it. So in here uh, we can see that uh, we have uh, some checks regarding if uh, storage type exists, and in case uh, uh, it uh, equals to local, uh, we'll pass and go through this code. Uh, we see we have uh, uh, some switch case regarding the event type, and in case it equals to get, we check that the developer checks if uh, the, the local storage is exist, and in case uh, and uh, check another weird uh, origin check uh, for its own uh, page, which will which will always be true. Um, then we can see in here. Uh, the, the data is equals to local storage dot get item and uh, with the paste data dot key which controlled by us so we have the ability to retrieve any uh, key from the local storage of the of the targeted website and we have and we we see that uh, they used post message in order to send the value back to the actual sender um, you can see we have uh, the, the, the this in case the event type is set, we have the ability to actually uh, um, set an item into the local storage, and we are controlling the key and the data to, that will be in, uh, inserted into the local storage, and we can delete uh, and remove item from the local storage based on a key. So basically, um, we have the ability. Um, to full control the the local storage rather than if it will be a read or end write uh, of the local storage of this uh, targeted uh, page. In here, uh, we can see that uh, same checks for storage type and they check in if it equals to a cookie. Um, here we can see that in case it is a uh, uh, the event type is get with the storage type cookie. Um, so in case the past key will be equals to uh, cookie all, we will be able to um, fetch the cookies uh, of the victims and they will send it back to us as the attackers. So we have uh, full control on the, uh, full, not full control, uh, we have the ability to read all the cookies of the uh, victim. Now, in here, uh, we can see um, uh, another uh, code, uh, which is the same code there, that they're all uh, is the same, the same part of the same code. Um, and we can see that we have uh, some checks if we have uh, pass data dot data and its data have a URL, and in case it is, we can see that we have some additional event types for muskref and muskref retry. And basically, we are controlling the data that 
URL and we are able to um, perform CSRF attacks on the victim because you can see that they are calling send requests and fire to URL, which allows us to actually send requests on behalf of the user. Um, now, the most interesting one is uh, the recusing frame, the, the uh, uh, case, and we will see that um, they are calling this uh, send recusing uh, uh, frame function, and let's go drill down to that. Um, so in here, we can see that uh, what the developer do is to receive the URL, which is controlled by us, um, it create an element, an iframe element, and it sets the URL as the iframe source. Uh, we can see that it's invisible one with no height and width, um, and they are appending the iframe to the body. Now, this allows us to be able to uh, use uh, JavaScript as the URL in order to actually um, perform actions within the same context of the, uh, the, vulnerable, the target uh, origin. Because when, when you're using iframe with a source of JavaScript, it just uh, receives the same, uh, the same uh, uh, origin context. Then we are able to, to do whatever we want uh, on behalf of this domain and run any, any, any JavaScript. So we can set some cookies, we can steal cookies, we can do whatever we want. Um, and as you can see in here, uh, we have a window reference post message. This is just an example of the actual exploit. So we see that we passed no sent uh, from BSDK uh, true in order to pass the, the, um, the restrictions. Then we use the event type recusing frame as we saw earlier. And we pass this data as a JSON object um, that contains a URL. And this URL is actually a JavaScript that can run. So we, we are able to run any JavaScript on behalf uh, uh, of this targeted uh, website. In here, you can see another example of uh, the ability to read and write uh, session storage. Um, this, print, this print screen is actually a half a version, version of the pasta, the, the research tool that we developed uh, that we will see in a few slides. Um, but what we can see in here, so we can see that we have local storage, uh, which is one origin. This is the malicious website. And we can see we have the targeted origin on the other end. And we can see a message sent from the, from the malicious site into the targeted uh, uh, website, um, we can see that he passed uh, a string with type storage, action get, and some key in order to, uh, so we, uh, we investigate the actual implementation. We see that they have this protocol, they're passing these JSONs, and they are, uh, they need to receive a title storage, action, and the key. And then we can see uh, the next message uh, that we are that uh, the, the, the vulnerable website sent um, to us back a message after we sent him a message to please give me this uh, session key. We can see that uh, uh, the type, uh, so we send it back a message with the type uh, get storage. We can see the key with the session key and we can see the actual value that we retrieved from the uh, victim. And then we can use this value in order to take over its account. Um, in here, we can see um, um, another use case that is simple um, um, implementation that in case we are uh, opening, uh, um, we are opening uh, the actual page and the actual page is loaded and is sent to its window opener this message and this message is actually um, have this uh, uh, data. You can see that the action is after I need. So after an in initialization of the page, this message is sent to us. All we needed to do is just to uh, have a, a window list, uh, an event listener to receive this message, and we just uh, uh, log them into the console. And you can see in here 
that we have uh, uh, some data regarding the user. And the most interesting one is the actual uh, CSRF token that we could use in order to perform actions and bypass the CSRF protection mechanism. Um, so we were we had the ability uh, to uh, perform actions on behalf of uh, any user that is uh, that will browse into our malicious page. Um, in here, we can see the um, AliExpress uh, sidebar. Um, you can see that, uh, so I was browsing AliExpress. Um, I saw this, I, I was intercepting the, the, the messages. Um, then I saw that we have uh, this, I saw some messages contains this, uh, the values of, uh, as you can see in here, in the, uh, uh, sales sidebar. Um, they had some different origin that they are embedded as an iframe and they communicate with them in order to fetch the list of the uh, sales uh, uh, packages or whatever. Um, and what we did is to actually, we, we went drill down to the code and, and let's see uh, what, what happened there. So basically, we can see that uh, they used the, their own listener wrapper with this uh, messenger, the, the store proxy, and they, they set up some, they have their own uh, setup for um, cross-document messaging. Um, you can see that the messenger.listen is actually a, a receiver. Um, then you can see that they are uh, use the space, the SPE to C um, and this value in order to split some operation with keys and values and they use their own weird implementation that the actual, the dash underscore dash is a separator and they used it some, some so this is like their own implementation for their own communication protocol. Um, then we can see uh, on the right that uh, in case the operation is set, so um, they will use this store, which is in this case the local storage, um, to uh, set a key and a value, which is uh, obviously controlled by, uh, by us. We can see that we can get uh, the store uh, values or any value in the local storage, and we, can, we could remove these uh, this, uh, keys. Um, so let's see the, the actual exploit. So after drilling down uh, and understanding the actual messages and their own uh, proprietary protocol, we used um, store dash. So the payload looks like store dash proxy, then the actual operation, which is set in this case, then we have this the, 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 the separator with dash underscore dash, the actual uh, key, which is the big promotion category list object. Um, then we have uh, the, the separator uh, again with dash underscore dash and uh, the malicious object it is, that is uh, controlled by us. Um, we loaded an iframe to the, um, the, to the uh, uh, vulnerable page and we use the exploit, uh, we waited just a half of a second um, in order to send the message so the iframe will be loaded. Basically, this is the most, uh, this is just an example of uh, how uh, um, exploit uh, can be written. So any user that will browse to it, uh, it will uh, rewrite its own uh, big promotion category list inside the local storage. And we can see in here that we have the, that we actually uh, executed this attack. And we can see that the big promotion category list object controlled by us. Uh, you can see that we changed the title um, to hackers and hobbies. Uh, we could uh, change the icon or the URL. And the URL is actually can hold uh, JavaScript. Uh, so Basically, once the uh, user will click it, uh, it will trigger the, the, the uh, malicious code. So, um, so hey, what we just, just to this page um, oh. and 
So once the victim allows it, it will uh, uh, inject the Hey, Barack, uh, just looks like it's cutting out right now at the moment. Um, we're, uh, we're just uh, we're into our just a 10 minute warning kind of thing. And I had a, just a couple of questions. Um, and, you know, if you had something you could just spin up real quick. Um, OK, well, you let me know. Um, yeah. So would you like me to, to continue or. Yeah, we just have two questions. One's a really simple one. Like, um, will the ref, you know, will these slides be available post talk? I'm guessing they can hit it up on your blog on Quentin. Um, and mm -hmm. then uh, the second one was kind of just talking about um, open messaging applications being used as an avenue to business infrastructure. Is that something that you see? Sorry, can you repeat? Yeah, so like uh, the question is, can open messaging applications be used as an avenue to business infrastructure? So, um, if yeah so in like if i if i try to like business infrastructure usually um you we can see a lot of uh, a lot of implementations around uh around um like third party apps and in in many many uh, infrastructure of of uh, infrastructure you can see um website builders and and many many other cases when you can see these uh these implementation um, a lot of uh, uh, advertisement um, implement around implementations. Um, yeah. Gotcha. And just a question on, I see your slides of magical research tool. Is that an open source product that uh, you're, you're Yes, uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, had uh, enough time to talk about it, but yes, uh, we, we as, as you can see in the presentation, um, so we basically managed to develop the to develop a, um, a research tool named uh, Posta. Um, so we looked for um, for in other implementation of such a research tool. Uh, we didn't see any any satisfied and really uh, professional one. Um, and we we wanted it to be uh, to be able to see senders and messages, to see the receivers in the messages, and to be able to actually simulate malicious. Uh, sender and receivers um this is why like uh, me and uh, two other guys uh, and omar yaron my colleagues uh, we managed to develop it uh, together um it's basically just a simple uh um, chrome chromium extension uh, that you can just install on your chrome um it has the ability so it intercepts the entire tabs it gives you the actual uh Hierarchy, as you can see in here, uh, we have the the Enzo dot security, um, and we can see the actual messages that sent to it and uh, received. Um, we can see the the hierarchy and go and drill down for each tab to understand exactly what kind of listeners it implements. So we will be able to see the listeners on the right uh, uh, when you can see now the, the the message. So you will be able to go and investigate the actual listener to see if they have a authorization in place, et cetera. And you have the ability to see and receive messages, uh, um, to see message, the incoming messages and outcome messages, as you can see in here. So you can simply see that the first message was uh, incoming from uh, vars.odger.com into enzo.security. And you can see the response of Enzo security uh, um, in here. Um, on the right button, uh, you can see you have two buttons, one for actually replying um, the, and reply requests as, as you wish. And we have the simulate exploit, which, uh, uh, which is an, another page that allows you to actually um, test an exploit for senders and receivers in order to be able to, to, to actually test your exploit um, in the most uh, in the most uh, efficient way. Very cool. Um, are there any uh, other projects you might your your you and your team are going to be working on? Um, I have or my own. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have my own uh, authorized uh, burp extension. Um, I I understood from from uh, Portswigger guys that is uh, it's one of the most popular uh, burp extension, and I. 
so happy about it and, and, and helping the, the community. Um, so I'm highly recommending everyone to, to check it out. I know it's pretty popular in the OPSEC world, but if you are not familiar with that, um, you have to. Um, yeah, and if I would, can I go through the best practices maybe? Yeah, good. Sure, go ahead. Great, cool. Um, so basically two of the most, uh, the most, uh, so two of the most uh, uh, important things regarding the regarding uh, cross document messaging will be to always declare uh, uh, an ex and define explicit origin target when you are um, using uh, post message method um, and never use a wildcard and will need to be really strict about that. Um, and the second is to actually, when you are receiving messages, make sure that you are having the verif verification, the origin verification uh, mechanism. Um, we should like, it is really crucial. And I see a lot of uh, implementation when developers are not aware of it and they are doing a lot of mistakes around that. So, so that's, that's the third point. So you have to to make sure that your developers are actually know um, to that and that know to actually write a proper verification mechanism because we can see a lot of cases maybe most of you um, know it from uh, from open redirection attacks when when the developers might implement some restrictions but they are actually uh, easily by possible and it is super important for them to to be able to uh, um, uh, know and share this knowledge and in order to for them and you to have a proper uh, origin verification. Um, the fourth point is regarding the, the headers. To be honest, like it's it's always welcome and it's and it's good, but it's the headers, the XFO headers is and and the cross origin policies, they are not really holistic. Um, so as I said, like the, the, the two, two first points are the most important and uh, I'm highly recommending you to, to challenge it. Awesome, well, thanks Barack. Yeah. The, the, I guess they call you the cookie monster probably. Um, <laughs> I really, uh, appreciate uh, your presentation, it was really informative.